Taylor, we're from MindYourMind.ca. We're at the Western Fair today interviewing Doc Walker. Hi, everybody. Hey guys. So you guys have really made your mark on the country music scene. Um, you guys have a lot of records. You guys have been touring for a long time. So I guess after the continuous success that you've had, how do you guys keep yourselves grounded? Uh, wives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, a yeah, wife. One wife yeah, each. One wife <laughs> each. <laughs> no, wife, uh, wife, wives and kids. Um, and I think it's because we've been doing it so long that, uh, you and it know. it's such a gradual rise, too. Yeah. It wasn't a Taylor Swift thing where overnight we, we sold a million records. No. We, we kind of took a bunch of baby steps, and uh, yeah. And our fans keep us grounded, too. You know, Thank we've you. got a really good relationship with our fans, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we have meet, meet and greets, and uh, they bring us lots of treats, treats and stuff. It's pretty crazy. It's a lot of fun. Um, so, what did you guys really realize that music was a career that you guys wanted to pursue? I was way too young to <laughs> realize that it was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a band together when we were 12. Really? So, yeah. 12. We're, so, I mean, we had a band when we were 12, but I, I, it's funny, I can never re remember not playing guitar. It was weird. I just, ever, ever since I've been young, I've mm -hmm. been playing guitar. So. Not good, mind you, but... <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. Right. <laughs> One day. <laughs> so back then, did you guys really, I mean, not when you were 12, maybe around 17, did you guys realize that you would have so much success over the years? Honestly, I, I, didn't, I couldn't picture myself doing anything else, and I had nothing else to really fall back on. Uh, and I thought it would be, you know, because when you're young and, you know, 17, you think you can do anything, and uh, I thought I could, mm -hmm. definitely. And I didn't think it would be this hard. <laughs> yeah, that's been a long road. So when do you, what do you guys uh, do to relieve stress being on the road so much? On the road or at home? Either or. Either or. <laughs> um, on the road, it's just stressful a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, the bus rides are, are, are fun. Uh, I really love fishing and hunting, so I do that when I go home and uh, kind of seems to clear my head. You know what? Cutting the lawn, mowing the grass for me is just... You sit there and you just... So for me, that's uh, I don't know, kind of a stress reliever. What about yeah. you, Dave? Well, on the road, you know, just FaceTiming with your family and, and stuff like that seems to relieve a lot of stress. And it really brings you right back into your own living room, in a sense. And, and uh, you know, we've been on the road for 20 years now, I guess. Yeah. And it's been, you know, any chance you can get home, even if it's through Facebook or Skype or, or anything like that, is, is a, really, uh, a really cool thing. Yeah. Uh, so, you guys are definitely no stranger to the road after 20 years, so what is the weirdest thing that's ever happened? Oh. <laughs> you have to pick lot. one. I have to Pressure's pick Pressure's on. The weirdest thing that's ever happened. I'll let you go. I don't know. Could be something that a fan did. Well, we've had a fan, well, a couple fans drove from Ottawa to Winnipeg to watch a show. That was... Not even Winnipeg, it was a small town, five hours north. Way north and west of Winnipeg, so it took them about 33 hours to drive there. Holy. Yeah. That's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even with the years of touring and playing shows, do you guys still get nervous before playing? Oh, yeah, for sure. Here and here and there, yeah, definitely. I, I used to suffer from some very high anxiety before getting on stage, especially when I was a kid. Really? Where I, I didn't know that. And, and yeah, no, because I joined your band, and I was like, ah, it's not my band anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the one that's going to look like a fool. So uh, I made him look like a fool for the last 20 years, and yeah. that's, uh, that's really gotten me through it. I don't so. think it's nerves or more excitement, you know? Mm -hmm. I think you get wound up and you get excited, and that's this. So when you guys do get nervous, like, how do you cope with the anxiety that comes along Well, I, I look at set list. Yeah? And uh, just sit and go through in my head. I watched a program on on sports guys. Like I think it was uh, Wayne Gretzky. They were talking about how you know he'll sit and sort of plan out before a game what he's going to do. And, and for some reason we were playing somewhere, and I sat and looked at the set list and thought, oh, that'll be this song will be good playing that one after. And maybe I'll say something like this here. And for me, it, it kind of prepares myself. And uh, I think the more prepared you are to to go and put on a performance, the the less nerve-wracking it is. I mean, if you don't know what's going on, then it's pretty nerve-wracking. <laughs>
Um, so where do you guys find your inspiration for songwriting? Oh, it, it comes from everywhere and anywhere. I think uh, when I was a kid, I listened to this uh, Tragically Hip record where he, he said uh, he's just, well, it was an interview, I guess, with Gord Downey, and he basically just said he's just much more aware of things, and he just kind of opened himself up to be more of aware and let things in uh, rather than letting moments pass by and, and really taking like little wee things and making a whole song yeah, out of them yeah, exactly. and I mean a lot of personal experiences we're older now so we have a lot more of those um, and we're also storytellers too you know I mean we uh, we write songs that have absolutely nothing to do with our lives but it's just cool being a storyteller you know it's a cool thing about music uh, so do you guys find that you've uh, grown older and wiser as people, um, that your music has really grown alongside you? Oh, for sure. You know, we, we talk about the records we've made. I think this next one is going to be our eighth record. And we've always taken a step forward. And anytime we uh, think we're going to take a step back, we just reevaluate yeah. and take our time and make sure that we are going forward. Yeah, I think so. I think what we've known or seen over the years and, and what's really special for us as artists is, is seeing your music connect with an audience and sometimes making uh, differences in people's lives. We've gotten stories about how certain songs have helped people through certain times and, and certain situations. So I think you have a different sense of responsibility too when you're writing. You're like, you know, you're, you're a little bit more, like Dave says, aware of your surroundings and, and knowing what the power of music is. So, I, you know, it's good to... Uh, it's good to change it up and, uh, and and also just have fun with it too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so many people, um, especially young people, people struggle with their mental health. So what advice would you guys give to those young people that are going through tough times? Well, I think right now, uh, especially with programs like, like this is, you know, you're not alone and you can get help, that's for sure. Like back in uh, the 80s and stuff when we grew up I, yeah. I don't know how much availability there like that there was and you know we had lots of friends and, and things that had mental health issues and, and they probably had nowhere to really turn and and now even with the internet and with Google and with uh, and uh, mind your mind it's uh, it's pretty great all the help that's out there yeah. and you know being musicians you know I think a bit of advice we can give is just pick up a guitar or, or you know, go play a piano, and, and it, it's a good way to uh, good way to spend your time, and it's a good way to uh, express yourself. And, uh, and in, a, in a weird way, it's it's a good way to get to know yourself yeah, as sure. a, as a person and as a, as a writer. When you write these lines down and, and you play this certain sound, it, it's like oh, I did that. That's <laughs> weird. I didn't know I could do that. So you kind of become a little bit more uh, familiar with yourself too. Mm -hmm. So what helps you guys when you're going through tough times? Oh, geez. Well, I think we have a strong core of people surrounding us and, uh, you know, we've been pretty lucky with not yet having, uh, you know, jobs <laughs> forever. <laughs> I worked at pizza. It was my last job when yeah. I was a little boy. And, I think uh, each other. Like, yeah, and, and, and definitely. Being in a band is a, is a weird thing. That it, you know, I try to explain to my friends, you know, I mean, these guys know more about me than my best friends do, but it's, it's what Nitty Gritty Dirt Band said, your partners, brothers, and friends. So I know uh, anytime like my mom passed away in 2007, and, I mean, it was a really tough thing for me. And if I, I, it would have been really, really hard had I not have had, you know, the guys in the band. So, I mean, for us, we're lucky enough that we've been around each, each other so long that we do have that kind of connection. Yeah, that constant support group. Yeah. Um, so off of any album you've released, what's your favorite song? And you have to pick one. Oh. Again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, an album called Go, and yep. there's a song on it called Go. <laughs> and we didn't release it, but uh, I always thought that was our the best song we've ever written. I, 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 I'd have to agree with that one. That's, that's one of my favorite songs that, uh, that we've ever written. It's, uh, it was hard to write. It was. It was really hard to write. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was one of those ones that was worth it in the end when you listen to it. It's, it's, I, why? I never went to release that, I don't know. We'll have to do that someday. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, so, as a band, you know you've really made your mark on the music scene, as I mentioned before. So, what would, advice would you give to an artist that was just starting out on the music scene? It's uh, it's all about consistency and longevity. It's and persistence. Just because, man, oh man, if we would have stopped after our first failures, yeah. or <laughs> would have stopped a long time ago. Yeah, it's and the thing is, it's it's not easy. Overnight success is seven to ten years. 
Um, it, nothing, nothing comes easy in life. I mean, and, and just because you see guys like Justin Bieber or you know American girl Idol girls girls like uh, you know Taylor Swift behind the scenes, there's still to to get to that point and to get to the, that sort of talent, they have spent years and years developing it. So yeah, well, we met Taylor when she was, was just this like twelve, yeah. And she was a good songwriter back then, but um, you know, I think it's just stick with it and love what you do. If you don't love what you're doing, you're not gonna do it. Awesome. So thank you guys thank for uh, coming out. Thanks, this is uh, Doc Walker with mindyourmind.ca.